Um, I put a bunch of QR codes in this uh, quick presentation for folks, so if you want to follow along, or if you're looking for the schedule, which we'll try to get back on track here quick. Um, yeah, this session is a bit of a presentation to share some updates from the package maintenance working group. Um, if you don't know who we are, I'm going to share a little bit of updates about that as well. Um, if you want a link to these slides as well, you can just go to bit.ly uh, 23.pmwg. Uh, um, who has heard about the package maintenance working group here? Raise your hand. Seriously? Wow. Okay. <laughs> you know who we are, maybe. Um, so quick, quick highlight our agenda, we're gonna talk a little bit about the working group, uh, current initiatives that we're working on, and then some opportunities that hopefully everybody here is excited about to contribute, work with us. Um, yeah, quickly, what is the working group and, and some information about us. Uh, goals, there's this big long uh, section in our readme about what our charter is or the goals of the, the working group. Um, but the key takeaways essentially that I've taken away in the last few years contributing to this, this working group are just that we're trying to identify key uh, projects within the ecosystem that we want to support um, and create essentially tools and processes to help uh, create an ecosystem that's sustainable um, and hopefully maintainable long term uh, and create tools and, and documentation uh, to support that ecosystem. So um, you can read through this entire blurb. I think we need to update it to be a little bit more succinct, like the key takeaways that I, I've, I've listed here. Um, but yeah, we're essentially trying to support and build the ecosystem um, into something that's sustainable. So that you don't feel like you hate building packages and you consuming packages, and that you just love your job, right? Like you love building modules and, and sharing them with people. Um, some history from this group, so some great things that we've shipped. Um, there's been a lot of documentation, so uh, part of you know, the ethos and, and the goals of this working group is to create um, processes and, and guidelines for how you can do things like licensing, how do you uh, create and have sort of security, uh, best practices, testing, publishing. Um, and we uh, worked on, or, or sort of at the time that I got involved with this working group, we were working on a, something called the support spec. So it's essentially a, a specification for a manifest file with a whole bunch of information about uh, what you do and don't support and sort of almost uh, creates a new kind of contract or license agreement um, with consumers. Um, and what fell out of that work was actually uh, the funding field. So if anybody's ever, ever defined this in your packages, um, this is something that I promoted within NPM when I was still working there. Um, and we actually added a new command to essentially uh, uh, pull this in and try to make this useful uh, within the ecosystem. Um, so I would say that this is, you know, one of the, you know, key successes from this working group is sort of pushing the idea that we want to help uh, package maintainers uh, essentially get paid for their work, but also, you know, create sustainable uh, workflows. Um, another key, I know Wes really pushed for this uh, back in the day, was creating the org PKG.js. Uh, Have folks seen that before? Hopefully. It's essentially a organization, a GitHub organization, that is attached to Node. And uh, we actually put a lot of experiments and net new tooling into that organization. Uh, it gives us a bit of freedom so that we're not sort of, uh, you know, throwing a bunch of garbage into experiments into the primary Node. <laughs> not garbage, but experiments. Um, again, some key sort of projects that have come out of that uh, sort of freedom that we have within this organization is things like the initial stats board work that I know uh, Wes worked on. Uh, Wibby, which is Will I Break You, that uh, uh, I know Dom has worked really hard on, and Dependence. Um, and then sort of a secondary uh, project that actually kicked off kind of in collaboration with the tooling working group was the parse args, or argument parsing work, um, which found a home in PKGJS before it landed in core. Um, so that, I, I think sort of this history tells you sort of what we're concerned about, you know, getting freedom and actually shipping and, and building things in the working group. And there's actually a lot of people in it, um, surprisingly. I'm not sure if this is ever, sorry? Isn't it the biggest? Yeah, so I don't know where these people are. 
today, but there's a couple in this room. Um, and we might have to do some house cleaning at some point. You'll notice the cute couple of people at the end there who haven't officially put their status as members, uh, Roy and Ethan. Um, they aren't here today, so I'm calling them out. Um, but we have uh, seven uh, administrative members and uh, 36, I would say, roughly, members that are, are associated with the working group. And these people will have rotated and contributed uh, in and out of uh, the project, I think, since its inception in 2018, I think. Michael probably knows 2018. Yeah, there's quite a few people who were interested in the beginning, but you're right that not nearly as active people in Yeah. But I thought I'd list them all. If you would like to add your name, please come join us. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the initiatives that we're currently working on and, and things you might get excited about uh, and, and help us uh, achieve. Um, so quickly, the origins of these initiatives. Uh, last Collab Summit in Vancouver, um, I brought forth uh, sort of the idea of this set of initiatives for the current year, so 2023. Um, and there was a number of the working group members there at the Club Summit in Vancouver. Um, and so we, we distilled them down to essentially four and they've become three initiatives that we're working on this year. And hopefully we'll have some traction uh, and more to share by the end of the year. Um, and so they come down to this, essentially PKG, J, PKG uh, JS Create, essentially is sort of an umbrella for a whole bunch of work that we're trying to do around uh, standardization, uh, linting, formatting, validating, anything to do with package JSON. I know Wes is doing a lot of work with that um, and uh, can give some updates in a bit. <laughs> and Ethan Airwood as well is helping uh, promote this work. Um, we've also sort of brought this to the OpenJS Foundation and, and have created Collab Summit or Collab Space uh, for this. Um, and then Jordan, I think Harbin, is taking over on the ESMC JS support documentation. This is essentially um, us trying to add more documentation for, for uh, the ecosystem to try to navigate the current state of this trans transition we're in. Um, and then for myself, uh, what I'm championing right now is essentially a improved status board, which gives us some insight into uh, the state of the ecosystem and uh, sort of gives us uh, an understanding of what projects we probably should reach out to uh, if they're starting to get into a place that we're concerned about uh, maintenance. Um, do you want to speak to this, Wes? <laughs> cool. So this is actually Darcy's idea, um, but basically NPM init has a long history of you know usage and it has also been sort of a dying ground uh, for well maybe not it just things just don't get added there right it's not changing it's not updating we've got new keys in package json that are dependent on by node.js and and expecting the npm team to add all those especially when they're controversial ones where there's like different takes um, is probably never a good design um, so the general idea was let's share some best practices and let's build some tooling around it uh, it's really just a package json initialization tool um, if you really want to boil it down but but as darcy mentioned there's like a whole bunch of different things that come in when you're starting a new package and and so create sort of is this umbrella where it would be, you you know, type npm init uh, pk. What's the actual command? Pkg just create. Yeah. Anyway, I obviously should probably remember that better. <laughs> um, but but it, basically, the the design is we want to uh, own some opinions, but not necessarily have to own all the actual setup scripts. So ESLint might have a create package that they use that sets up your ESLint config. Uh, you know, if you're in a React package, maybe React has a bunch of opinions um, about things. And, and the idea is to make our tooling work play really nicely with those. Um, so instead of, you know, buying into an ecosystem of package scaffolding, uh, we would come up with something that, that works a little bit better um, composing with other tools. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, there's a whole bunch of packages sort of in the initial implementation. The create one, there is a create package JSON. Uh, there's create, I think it has like a GitHub integration. It has, 
There's a lot to it. There's a bunch of little ones, and, it, and each of those is a separate package. We're looking for contributors on all levels. Uh, if you go to the repo for this, which is in the PKGGS org, I, I made a little diagram sort of trying to outline the architecture um, intent. So if anybody's interested in that, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can contribute. And the status update is really that Ethan, uh, who is leading the, uh, I think the collab space is called package metadata interoperability. No, yeah, it was too long. I just made it. <laughs> yeah, we're really good at choosing names. Um, so the idea is we're going to document package JSON as it is today. And then we're going to work on providing tooling and uh, better integration for things like validation. I don't want to say the word specification, but that is also on the table. Um, and, and then have a, a place where all this can live that folks can kind of come and contribute instead of having to go to, you know, Darcy's former team and say, hey, please add uh, exports or, you know, whatever all these fields. Um, they can come and collaborate in an, in an open and um, community-owned project. So I think that's it. Oh, and then, and then the reason why there's an update is uh, we're going to be working in parallel on the, the documentation and specification parts for package JSON and the tooling. Um, so they're not necessarily blocking each other, but if you're interested, um, there's going to probably in the long run be a fairly tight uh, back and forth between those two groups as we, as we work toward um, having slightly better consistency around what it means to have a package JSON file. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, this is uh, essentially codifying uh, what is already in the <laughs> ecosystem, as Wes was saying. And I think it's getting more and more important that we do that as we see more and more runtimes come into the space. Um, so I think it's natural that we start to have some opinions about how people can uh, generate package JSON and what fields are essentially privileged or common keys, I think is the term that um, Ethan's been pushing. Uh, so the other update in terms of the other uh, project that we had on the fly, uh, Jordan gave this just the other day. Um, he's still waiting to write the initial draft of this documentation, but you're, if you're interested in this, we really would love uh, any kind of support, any kind of opinions. There's a, currently a thread which is uh, linked here dual, uh, called dual publish. Uh, I think this is the primary uh, context in which Jordan's going to write this documentation, but essentially any documentation related to ESM and CJS um, and improvements we can make to the docs, the node docs, uh, I think is, is uh, important and we would love your, your help. Uh, and then the one that is closest to my heart is the Stats Board project. I'm not sure if you were around. A few years ago, I presented at a Collab Summit back in Montreal, Node Interactive 2019, maybe 2020. It's been a while. I, I shared uh, with the group uh, essentially the NPM status board and, and tried to really promote the idea that having an all-in-one dashboard uh, and view of projects can really help with um, navigating and answering questions easily. Um, and at the same time, I know that we had begun some work actually in the package maintenance working group on a stats board project that you could use today for your projects. Um, and we used it here. There's some screenshots here of how it looks like uh, in Express. So Express is using this right now. Um, and so when we're talking about the impactful project stats board, we're essentially talking about an evolution of this where we're tying together the ecosystem and uh, into uh, an all in up uh, view for our team and, and even anybody that wants to look at it um, uh, to sort of get insight into the, the health and state of projects. Um, not the entire ecosystem, obviously, but um, like an uh, impactful subset. Um, so some work or an update on this, this work is uh, I did uh, a bit of work to get the high impact projects just recently. Um, there's some projects out there that have done this kind of work before using download counts and sort of the uh, most depended upon uh, projects. And we got a list of around 7,000 uh, projects in the ecosystem that we're going to start uh, essentially creating a, a dashboard for. Um, so you'll see something very similar to the screen before created for essentially 7,000 projects. So you can basically you know, query metadata about them, um, potentially things like the engines fields that they support so it, or issues, and we can sort of see trends over time about uh, whether or not the ecosystem is, you know, trending upwards or downwards. Go ahead. So 
So the download count is uh, being pulled from NPM, and it doesn't differentiate by version or anything like that. It's just the overall um, package uh, downloads, which is a huge pain in the neck for a lot of maintainers, <laughs> not having that kind of granular data. So, um, but these, this uh, criteria is the same criteria that NPM uses and GitHub uses as my former employer, I, I, I know that, um, to identify uh, essentially. So we're, we're, we've identified basically the same set that you'll find across the ecosystem. And this has been deduped, so that 7,007 uh, projects is deduped against those two sets, so um, yeah. Um, so the next steps are to actually design the front end. It's gonna look a little bit differently and hopefully we're gonna have a lot more capabilities than um, the current sort of uh, status board project um, and set up CI pipeline for fetching the metadata. We don't expect this to be sort of infrastructure heavy. Um, we can use uh, sort of free compute to, to get this uh, information going or, or get this information into a place that we can use it. Um, so where are some opportunities for you to get involved? Obviously in any one of those projects or initiatives that we've got on the go, um, but also we've got some backlog documentation. If you're interested in helping us uh, write guidelines, best practices for, for these subjects. We actually have open issues in the repository right now um, that you could go, uh, you know, become a champion, come help us, uh, you know, sort of flush out um, all the docs within, uh, you know, within our uh, repo. Um, or, you know, as we sort of see ESM and CJS becoming more and more of a pain point for folks, um, maybe you can help us in this area. I, I consider this to be one of the biggest um, gripes in the ecosystem currently in terms of interoperability. Not just this, but also optional dependencies and things like that are, are really biting people today. Um, and so navigating this has uh, is going to be a problem for us for many years to come, as you can see. Uh, the current state is that you know we won't see CGS become uh, sort of the minority stake in our ecosystem for another six years, unless we sort of push actively push the ecosystem um, in a, in one direction or another. Um, and again, just to harp on this point in terms of like where to invest um, our time and and supporting this community, uh, top uh, three of the top eight. Um, pain points uh, described in the uh, state of JavaScript uh, 2022 uh, survey, which had t over 20,000 respondents, uh, was for writing modules, finding packages, and managing dependencies. And so it's like, these are areas that we should really be investing in and definitely things we want to sort of help solve for in our, in our working group. So I think that's it. I had a couple, I think, links there or resources. Let me see. There you go. Um, yeah, so come join us. Uh, we've got, obviously, a, a, a repository um, in the Node.js org. Um, we have monthly meetings now, or we're moving to monthly meetings. I think Michael's been pushing for that. Um, we have a package maintenance Slack channel as well. Um, and you can collaborate with us today. We, will, we have a room, I think, right after this session uh, in room two, 5D. And yeah, any questions? I had one just back on the, the, the one that showed CTS and one back in Burbs. What's FO? FO, uh, I'd have to dig up, it's, it's right there in the, in the information. You can go check what they're defining FO as, but I, I think probably. I think it's like Webpack's little shitty thing. Like, yeah. I think it's one of the shits. Yeah. I, I read this link a while ago. This is a while ago, yeah. yeah. I think it's like the, the defining default and the, the, I think it uses. I read it as fake. Because that's what I mean there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, thick. It's, it's a CJS module pretending to be a PSM. Okay. But it gives you the PSM. You can use it. It gives you broken PSM. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fo is a good word for it. So, including fo, like including fo, if we didn't include fo, it would actually take a lot longer. So I'm I'm being actually, you know, positive, optimistic that by 20 uh, in this calculation that the we will, won't get to a minority stake of the high. This is again using that same metric that I, I calculated before, the high impact, 
of the high impact projects, how many are, of them are ESM, dual, uh, CJS, et cetera. So if we want to help move this needle, this is where we could also invest. I, I don't want to make this a CJS, CSM thing, but did, was there ever a initiative talked about by the project or adjacent groups that that's actually a goal? I'm not saying it is. Okay. I'm saying that this is, uh, so, this is the state that we have today. It's obviously trending in one direction. This is the state of the opinion of our ecosystem saying that they're having a hard time sort of navigating the variants of, of package uh, imports and exports. And I think it's only going to get worse, right? That's my, my not. I don't think it's hyperbolic. I've spent a lot of time in, this, in the ecosystem, in the heads down in this ecosystem for the last four years. So it's, it's only going to get worse unless we do something about it or if, if we sort of start to support in different ways. So documentation can help, guidelines, tooling can help in this regard. But uh, yeah, it's not that I'm saying we have to make an opinion about whether or not this is good or not. It's just this is the state and it's going to continue to as far as I can tell, but, you know, by 2030, we we'll, might be in a minority stake of, of CJS um, in that high impact province. And I think in terms of the document, it's not intended to have an opinion that says do one or the other, but like, if, you, if you've chosen to do this one, here's how you could do support both, if you think that's good for you, or if you're saying for the exam, or if you get whatever. Yeah. Yeah, going back to this, to this I think it's supposed to be uh, this initiative is supposed to be high-level documentation around, uh, in, in Jordan's case, he's focused on dual, um, dual publishing, so. I think, it, yeah, like the, the original issue was like, hey, let's, let's support how you could do both, but I think in the end it's going to kind of be like, here's some, uh, here's some things of why you might want to do one or the other or both, and then if you've made that choice, here's the recommendations that we can give you, because lots of people are like, well, I'm trying to do this, it's wrong. Dude. The other thing that uh, I see happen a lot here is that we're looking at the data that's where people are using or like what their modules are doing. I've also seen like the moment I joined Twilio, uh, Sidray changed all the stuff to CJS and so we found the or sorry, TSM and we switched off of it. Uh, and that was like, so this data is like useful but it is also like not actually representative potentially of there is a potential that we see people or decreasing usage of ESM modules. And so I think if we're presenting this data, we also need to make sure to get that data as well. That might be something that you know, we work with uh, work on. Uh, but that is like those correlating those things, I think it's really important as we be, like if we're beginning to invest in this node, we need to like understand that dynamic and uh, make sure we have a full picture. Yeah. I I think this is uh, not granular enough, as you said, um, to give you that insight, um, because many of these might be high impact projects that made that change that now are sort of stealing away or using that sort of market share to be still be a part of this graph. Um, yeah. yeah, right. So, like, Syndra is a great example. Um, Inc. was in CJS, or, or uh, most of uh, packages were in CJS, and now. Migrating all those to ESM, it's yeah. And I've seen many people drop those packages. Right. But I mean, again, this is also the subset of high impact, so downloads are still going to that. Yeah. I was wondering, so this to me fits into like the category of uh, like ecosystem insights or something. Like, so this is one specific case, but I think we've got probably a ton of different ones that we we'd love to be able to do this thing for. Your, you mentioned that it's not compute intensive to do on the top 7,000 or so. Is this something we should be expanding out into a more generic like, ecosystem insights dashboard? And, and because it can get very expensive if we actually try to dig deep down into like the full thing, but if we just place off the top, like, it seems like the package maintenance working group could probably build a dashboard that at least does, can answer like that question. Is it trending up or down over time kind of stuff? Um, like a, I, again, yeah. Free yeah, there might be corporate interest to build that. Yeah. I, or there might be somebody building that right now. Well, but, but there... You mean? <laughs> <laughs> there has never been from NPM interest in publishing those actual interests. I know there was interest from TSM, but I don't 
15 members, but it just never came true, or it never came out. Uh, so when you say there are the interests, I'm not saying that I disagree, I'm just saying I don't know, until I see it, I'm, I'm not sure, like it feels like something the community should own. I guess actually maybe more what I'm going with that. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, I'm, I'm not super committed, but it, I think it feels like a community run insights board that has things people care about, like ESM or yeah. Trends, like I'll show you one thing and then I'm, I'm out of here, I promise, Claudio. I'm sure you've seen modulecounts.com. There's a lot of garbage data in the ecosystem, unfortunately, and you, you'll see this camo hump, like you'll see this hump. And does anybody know what that hump is? No, it's a spam attack on the registry. And so there was about a and this was reported if you know uh, follow some of the security blogs there's like 500,000 to a million like packages added to the registry and then taken down and so if we were to catalog let's say the entire ecosystem like it, it, i think it would just become uh, too intent uh, like compute intensive to try to get that insight for the entire ecosystem and i think the only like there might be again like a, a company interested to give that insights to the ecosystem for free. Um, but I think we can just do a good job with that like top top layer and get enough insight to, to make meaningful decisions. And again, we, we the, the whole point of the working group is to find those key projects that have are sort of load bearing uh, because there actually is like very, there's like maybe a, a very small percentage, like there's only 7,000 that met that criteria of over a million downloads and or over, I think, 200 or 500 dependents, um, which you might think is like, that doesn't sound like that hard criteria to hit, but there's actually only 7,000 packages out of 2.5 million. So there's a lot of actual garbage or things that aren't being used in the registry. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're over time, but thank you so much and uh, come join us.